Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. We're looking at the Q document. This is a, a scholarly reference. Uh, if you're studying the Gospels, uh, scholars will talk about the Q document. And basically, uh, the Q document is the German word quail, which means source. And so behind the Gospels, the scholars reckon there is a, a Q source. Now, in the 19th century, most scholars believed that Matthew was the book of Matthew was written first. But scholars uh, uh, in the mid 19th century begin to change, began to change, and basically stated that uh, Mark was the original uh, first gospel, and that uh, Matthew and Luke got their source material from Mark and the Gospel Q. Uh, this is basically the idea. Um, now, the problem with that is is that there was a reason why a lot of scholars in the 19th century believed Matthew was written first, because the early church historian Eusebius states that it was written first. Um, so that's very, very clear uh, and contradicts what modern scholars went on to, to believe. Um, some issues of why I think that this Q document is just a, a bad scholarly way of looking at things um, are, are as follows. Number one, nobody's ever found remotely anything uh, like a Q document. So there's no actual physical material of documentation that we can find. Uh, nobody can agree as to exactly what the Q document actually would entail. And finally, there is no historical verification of a Q document. There is no historian, thinker, writer, philosopher, or anybody who has pointed to this document. So basically, it's a figment of the, sc the scholarly imagination. And so when you're listening and you about these scholars on the Q document, uh, just take it with a pinch of salt, OK? Uh, I've been to two seminaries and listened to some of the world's best theologians and professors. And uh, so I'm telling you with authority, just take it with a pinch of salt, OK? Um, if you want to read the scholarly work in the Q document, uh, type in Etta Linneman. She's a, she was a world authority in these things. Uh, she was a Boltman scholar. She became a born-again Christian. She renounced a Boltman scholarship that was into all this kind of Q document stuff. She renounced it. She wrote a scholarly work critiquing it and the academic world when she was following Boltman, absolutely loved her, thought she was brilliant. When she turned her back on Boltman scholarship and the Q document and wrote a book critiquing the Q document, the scholarly world ignored her, uh, showing you that the scholarly world is not as open-minded as it claims to be. So Etta Linneman is the scholar that you can go on Google and you'll find articles and you'll be able to buy her book which gives you the scholarly apparatus, if you need it, uh, to debunk uh, the Q document, okay? But if you're a seminary student today and your seminary professor wants you to write an article on this topic, you're going to have to play the game and do it. But deep down, whatever you do, don't take on board these scholarly ideas because they're just a figment of their imagination. All right, this is Jason. Thank you for listening and take care.